Hello and welcome to another episode of Community Connections. As always, I am your host, Anna Orr. Today's guest is here on behalf of Literacy Minnesota. His name is Christian McCleary. We're going to talk about the work that's going on at Literacy Minnesota, the hotline that they have for you to get classes around literacy, English as a second language, and so much more. This is not going to be an episode you want to miss, and I'm sure there'll be some tidbits for you to pass along to your friends, family, and those you love most. Stay tuned. Hi, Christian. Thank you for joining me today. Yes, can thank you, you for inviting. Can you introduce yourself and talk about your role with Literacy Minnesota? Yes, so uh, as you mentioned, my name is Christian McClary. My pronouns is he, him, his. Thank you. <laughs> You're I welcome. Uh, my role with Literacy Minnesota is I am the hotline coordinator and the outreach coordinator. For the hotline, I'm responsible for all of the calls we may receive throughout the state, connecting people to free adult classes. If you say an outreach sounds pretty self-explanatory uh, outreach is just me getting out there tabling events going to libraries dropping off any drop lid or flyers or anything that you know re pertains to free classes for adults that's actually how we ended up meeting we were at an event for urban ventures an yes. outreach event that they were having and you were out there tabling on behalf of literacy minnesota and we connected and i said i think you would be wonderful to have come on and talk about not only your work but also um the gift that is literacy yes so can you talk to me basically about the mission of literacy minnesota i don't know if our viewership is necessarily familiar yes so the mission of literacy minnesota is to share the power of learning through education, community building, and advocacy. So that means we envision a world where life-changing learning is at everyone's disposal, just at the hands for everyone. And cool. that is a world, promoting literacy is a world that we can live in. I think so. Can you talk to me about how literacy has impacted communities through your work, like how you've seen the footprint of excuse me, illiteracy basically taking place throughout the community. Yeah, so um, the, we we struggle with the word illiteracy um, because it's just no proper way to measure someone's intellect. Uh, you know, we can't do it because there's so many different learning styles out right. there, so many different creativities. People understand and comprehend in ways that best fits them. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's auditory listening, whether it's visual learning, whether it's hands on activities. So, one thing we do is we try to tap into all of those aspects to say, we could help you learn based on your learning style and we can help you grow in that capacity. So, that's just one of the things we're doing. We also have. Um, a lot of projects going on. Uh, we've really taken on a diversity, equity, and inclusion lens and really being, I want to say, intentional about how we serve the communities we're serving mm -hmm. and the communities we would like to serve. So our high population, we see a lot of immigrant and refugee communities come for English as a second language learning help as yeah. well as citizenship, computer help as well. And for GED, we try to promote that within those immigrant and refugee communities, but also within our native born U.S. community as well. Okay. Okay. I think that's really important. I recently was reading about MCA test scores here in the state of Minnesota, and mm -hmm. that is the ability to assess um, children and adolescents who are struggling with math as well as reading. And those numbers have been some of the lowest nationwide mm -hmm. for our community. So when I think about, like you said, literacy, and a lot of your work is around adult literacy, but I know you have a background with early education and teaching this to children. Can you kind of talk about that connection? Yes. Uh, do you mind if I go into a little bit of storytelling? Please. If that's all right. Okay. So younger <laughs> in my in my adolescent years, I was doing AmeriCorps programs, national service, and I was Absolutely. actually teaching enrichment within schools, uh, K twelve education. Wow. One thing that didn't necessarily help, but I thought was a gift, was being really close in age with uh, the enrichment and the students that we were you know, helping support mm -hmm. within the class settings. Uh, but that process helped me discover that I don't think teaching was a necessary tool that I could go 
because there's a lot of parameters around the K-12 teaching system. Yes. And I'm like, I don't do well with parameters necessarily. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I understand. Who does? You know, it's, so it's like we're not animals at a zoo. We, we, we can't just we can't just do things, and we can really have like the change is super limited within certain settings when it pertains to K twelve. So after I, <laughs> I went through that program, I was like, okay, teaching is not for me. Uh, and then I got into adult education based on my own personal journey. So I received my GED. Um, when I was about 17 going on 18 okay. uh, traditional high school just wasn't it wasn't the way for me you know so many barriers I had to do you know as a person of color I had to go through helping supporting my family mm -hmm. financially uh, you know mentally physically emotionally it was just taxing mm -hmm. uh, to be in that school with these parameters as well as provide for a family um, and then I got a second chance to another organization and they just showed me like, hey, you can do anything you want. Put me in front of some talking engagements and put me around some education and people in a similar boat. And I was able to proceed and, and move on and move forward. But going back to your question, yes, uh, within our literacy scope, we are predominantly serving adults. However, our adults have similar reading levels mm -hmm. to the children. Sometimes the children are within their households and with, you know, within their families. So it's like, yeah, we have an adult that has the responsibilities of an adult out mm -hmm. in the world. However, the literacy level is still, you know, anywhere between that three to fifth grade, third to fifth grade type of mark. I think um, that's something a lot of people don't necessarily consider, that if a kid is having hardship with reading mm -hmm. in the classroom and a teacher is saying something to that effect, that maybe the adults in the home as well are struggling with reading and reading comprehension. Yeah. And I don't think um, we necessarily make the connection, but also have resources reticently available, like you said, in some of our systems that exist currently to aid with some of that. I don't hear a lot about adult literacy work. Mm -hmm. And so to not only discover your organization, but also to read about the initiatives that you guys are doing, such as the hotline, which I hope we'll talk about soon, yep. um, it seems to be not only necessary, but also very impactful for families as a whole yeah one thing we can't forget is that kids eventually become adults that's the truth over time you know so it's like what happens to that kid that's not getting that additional support that's not getting their learning style tailored to then we have an achievement gap where we're like yeah we have a community of people that is falling within the systems but the problem isn't the problem is the system, I would say, but I'm not going to go too deep into that. I would say another issue I see is just working within that system to say, are we really being as accommodating to our children mm -hmm. as we could? And if we are not, then those children who become adults, we have problems with, uh, you know, reading leases, you know, reading contracts, starting businesses. And then a lot of those things, you know, call for third party associations to come and support. But it's like, where is that third party support within their early childhood years? Can you talk about some of the deficits that you witnessed throughout the touchstone of doing the work that you are when you notice that kids are not only struggling with their reading and their reading comprehension, but uh, parents are as well, and how that actually begins to ripple. I just heard you talk about it a little bit as far as leases and contracts go, but I think um, those of us that have the ability to read don't necessarily get the actual ripple effect that takes place with this deficit being in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would also say <laughs> that to me the biggest deficit is reading and I'm, I'm gonna take it to the black community Please. right now reading for the black community wasn't always an agenda that was positively promoted um, and we could you know we we know about our history in earlier years where that gift was stripped from us mm -hmm. um, in certain ways today it is still being stripped from us so the way we have to do it is we have to proactively approach it differently like, what are some fun things about reading mm -hmm. that we could really tap into to help 
you know get there but then again you know we we have communities that have you know mental health issues and disabilities and they have these obstacles as well as the obstacle of reading itself and then i could take it to the immigrant and refugee community with the same thing we have the language barrier where it's a barrier to actually dissecting the reading itself so i would say simply um it could be viewed as simply maybe it's not but one thing i would recommend is just that people get coaching and support and with that coaching and support it's going to take time it's going to be lots of emotions it's going to be lots of frustrations however it is something that could be done can you talk about some of the initiatives that Literacy Minnesota is offering currently so yeah. that we can start to close the circle on some of this hardship um, because we have this, such a wonderful resource within our state? Mm -hmm. So Literacy Minnesota has uh, some really good initiatives going on currently. Uh, one of our most, I would say, most well-known initiatives we have is anthology books that we promote to the community. And we have an anthology called Journeys based on the stories of our learners within our classrooms. Mm. And that learner could be within the adult basic education field as a whole because we service a lot of state programming and we're partnered with a lot of different states offering free classes for adult type of services. Um, but our latest is uh, Black Literacy Matters which is our newest anthology tailoring specifically to black stories mm -hmm. within the state. And this is not just our learners. Okay. So, you know, uh, this anthology, I would say became very popular after the incident that happened here in Minneapolis with George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And I was just in a staff meeting one day. It was like, I've been thinking about something of this. Mm -hmm. It's like, we do it already for our learners. But where is that additional voice for our black community? Mm -hmm. You know, how could we prioritize literacy and still, you know, equity, be equitable, you know, prioritize justice? Yeah. And this was a way we can do it. And we know it's not completely just. And we, we talked about the systems, which is why it would never be completely just. But the amazing stories that went into this book. I was just the mind behind it you know I just had an idea and I just worked on it but like you hear a lot of stories and it's organic often authentic storytelling mm -hmm. and in order for us to really make this book happen we had to we had to bring that additional support of like what we call navigators mm -hmm. to help because we understand that people could talk absolutely but they may not necessarily be able to write or people could write but they may not be necessarily you know, able or have the ability to communicate it as effectively as they would like. So with this book, it just came an amazing opportunity. And, you know, this was a pilot, but the pilot turned out to be really cool. Uh, I have a great example of that. I have a, uh, a person that uh, stopped me at a tabling event. <laughs> And I was like, hey, you know, have you ever heard of Literacy Minnesota? We have free classes. And then I knew this person from work a while ago. We did some projects together. And then she was like, oh, yeah, we uh, she was like, oh, you guys publish one of my writings in your books. And I was like, oh, oh that's amazing. And it's like I knew her in the past, but I didn't know that she was involved in this writing. And the writing was I literally wanted it open to the state of Minnesota. I don't care whose black story it was. I don't care how graphic it was. Mm -hmm. I don't care how expressive it was, how specific it was. I wanted people to become published authors. And I just put it out there. And, you know, I communicated with a lot of predominantly black organizations. And I was like, hey, I welcome you to invite your clients and yourself and or people you work with in the community to get something in this book. So right now it looks a little flimsy, but I guarantee you it is filled with lots of love and joy. And uh, and wow, I just turned to the page of the person who, <laughs> who was telling me about the book. But Quite the full circle moment. Yeah, it, it's definitely full circle. But one thing I haven't realized is like, just by me communicating my idea, mm -hmm. I was able to bring it to life. And a lot of people wouldn't necessarily see that within their organization. Mm -hmm. This was a quick change. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, we've been doing it anyway, so I guess that it wasn't that 
much of a change. But however, you know, it's so much that goes into publications. That it does. You know, it takes a village to really promote literacy and to help people articulate what they want to share to the world. I think it's a beautiful concept, not only to capture those stories, like you said, black literacy does matter, but I think it also, um, it gives people a voice for years to come mm-hmm. um, that may never have gotten a chance to tell their stories, like you said, because of whatever the case may be. And um, to hear not only that such a book exists, but also that you said this was something we were already doing. Mm-hmm. But we needed to be able to not only open this up to other organizations, but also provide this at the fingertips of educators and so many other community orgs. Um, Can you share with me just a little bit about um, where people can find this book or where they can actually read about some of these amazing stories if they haven't gotten the chance to already? Yes, so that's going to take me to uh, more information that I was going to share. So if anyone wants to find these books or to get more involved in any efforts with Literacy Minnesota, you can go to literacymn, as in Minnesota, dot org. And that website would have information. You know, there's staff opportunities available. There's internship opportunities available. uh, There's volunteer opportunities available. And any way you feel fit or see fit, best fit, we welcome you to come and join us. Uh, the books, you can find the books on that website. You could also find uh, the hotline information on that please website. Talk about, uh, please share with our viewership about the hotline. Yes, yeah, so the hotline is, as I mentioned earlier, it's just promoting free classes for adults. So we have GED, adult diploma, English as a second language learning, citizenship, computer, math and reading, uh, and family literacy. So some of our most popular ones is English as a Second Language Learning, ESL, because we've seen a lot of immigrant and refugee communities, especially within the Twin Cities, communicate that they want to better and build their literacy skills. Not to say they can't communicate now. They're like, hey, I want, I want to do this. Yeah. So I want to do this. I'm going to call and I'm going to get enrolled. Sometimes we have people taking more than one class. Like, I'm doing computers, I'm doing English, I'm doing citizenship. And I'm like, these are all great things to do, Mm -hmm. you know. And I think um, within Literacy Minnesota, having a a healthy staff and a healthy team to really back ideas of individuals and really invest it in the work. Adult basic education is not necessarily the most popular field, Mm. you know. Uh, It's not, a lot of resources don't necessarily go into it. Uh, you know, if we're talking about like other forms of education, mm-hmm. post-secondary education, institution, institutions, uh, going back to K-12, the budget is just not there. Um, so I could tell that anyone doing adult basic education work is in it for the right reasons because they care about the growth and the development of supporting the individuals. Um, that hotline number, so if you're someone looking for free adult classes, you could call 800 800- Two 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 one nine nine zero. Again, the number is eight hundred two 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 one nine nine zero. We also have a text option six one two four two four one two one one. Again, that text option is six one two four two four one two one one. And I just invite anyone to check out the website. Uh, you could connect with me if you would like. I'm also on the website, but my email is really long, so I won't give it. So I'll just give a, a call number so you can call me directly. Uh, it's 651-251-9067, and the name is Christian McClary. That's wonderful. Thank you for by- providing not only those uh, channels for us to actually connect, but us for us to actually stay abreast of what's going on. Now, speaking of what's next, we are currently in the fall, which means people are, kids are back in school, yes. teachers are back in the classroom, as well as it's creating a lot of free time during the day for parents. Can you kind of uh, provide us just with a few resources or a few tidbits that'll kind of help start to begin the conversation around literacy if there is someone watching this that feels inquisitive about the work that's taking place. Yes, and the perfect answer I can give to you is I hear stories all the time, so I don't even know if it's a story. It's just a very popular saying that once children go back to school, their parents who are looking for school are automatically motivated to get back into classes and enroll. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so some summers we give certain breaks depending on the school. Schools have breaks, sometimes week off, and they try to align it with when children are out of school, mm -hmm. just so we could accommodate for that. Uh, we also, I, I didn't mention, but we also, certain programs that we partner with within the state would offer some um, preschooling or childcare services uh, just for families. So if you're attending classes, you have someone who could you know, watch and work on some literary things with your children. I think um, that's or, wonderful or your that's often a roadblock for people. I want to participate in something, but I've got one child in school or my kids aren't school age yet and mm -hmm. I don't have somebody to watch them and not somebody that maybe I can trust. So to be able to take your class and have your kid in the same environment watching you further your education mm -hmm. or pick up these tools that really are going to last forever um, seems to be really um, necessary but also taking a load off families back which I hear more and more often throughout the work you're talking about we're not only um, helping adults get these tools but also helping build stronger families and stronger communities it's right here <laughs> family literacy <laughs> Family literacy. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just the way I see it is that literacy should be prioritized, period. Because if there's no communication, then there's no conversation. That's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. And Christian, people just want to be understood. I'm sorry. Good. No, go ahead. But people just want to be understood. That's the truth. But we got to take those steps to help so we could better understand. That's true. People of different communities, different backgrounds, different ages, different ethnicities. It is truly a gift to not only hear um, about the work that you are doing, but also to see that there is a black man at the helm of doing this amazing work. When we know historically that um, black people weren't allowed to read, it was literally against the law. Mm -hmm. And that, um, Many of our ancestors died because of their ability to read and their ability to help others read documents and things like that. So we not only celebrate you in the work of Literacy Minnesota, but we hope to have you back and to talk about um, some more connections that we can make soon. Oh, yes. I'm looking forward to it. Christian, do you have any final thoughts you want to share with our viewership or any um, words of wisdom to encourage people that are interested in participating? Yes, absolutely. So I would say to the audience, the power is within you, the power is within learning, the power is within understanding. And if you choose to do that and to really focus on making yourself the best you, then you could achieve anything that you want to do. Thank you for joining me, Christian. It's been a wonderful time hearing not only about your work, but also about this amazing book that just came out as well. Yes, thank you. That is all the time, unfortunately, that we have today. Thank you so much to the team at Literacy Minnesota, Christian McCleary, and those of you for watching. I have enjoyed our time together, and I look forward to connecting again with you soon.